Welcome to Inox Engineering, I'm Alan. Today I'm replacing this plastic handle I made for a cam vise. This is the cam part and as you turn this it, it pushes a vise jaw forward and locks onto the components. This is made of plastic. It was made out of three sections glued together with a bore in the one end and a counter bore in the other end. The problem I've got with this being made of plastic, uh, whenever I tighten it up, I always think that the glue is going to come undone and break. It hasn't up to now, but what I thought is if I made this out of steel, then I wouldn't have that problem. So let's go into the workshop, see how we do it. Today I'm looking at making one of these cam levers out of steel. This was um, a, a temporary one I made out of plastic. And what it does, it operates this, this vise. So on my CNC I can put a piece of wood in, clamp it up, and it's ready for machining. The problem with this handle is it's three pieces and it, being plastic I expect it to break at any time. So this is the part I want to make out of steel with a steel handle to replace this. Let me take the end off. There's a small cap in the, in the end that just holds the centre bar. So it's just an OD with an offset bore which has got two sizes. The jaw is movable. If you wanted it to be square instead of machining this much out you could put a pin in there so it would slide in and out but keep it square. The T-slot grips this these two stops this turning so I can make one of those out of steel this piece is made out of three sections glued together that's why I want to make this out of steel so I think I can improve on that I selected this piece of steel which is 40 millimeter diameter which is just big enough to make one of these doesn't matter the diameter so the first thing I want to do is face this off, then offset it by 5mm, drill a bore and produce this recess. Just take the corner off. Okay, now that's ready to be offset. What I need to do to offset this is put my dial indicator in the tool holder. The dial indicator is in 10 divisions or a thousand, so that's running out. Zero that, two and a half thou. First of all, I want to move this five millimeters across, which is 196 thou. I've just touched the dial indicator on it, set it to zero. So I'm moving the dial indicator in 196 thou. 10, 20, 30. There's a hundred. Hundred and ninety-six. Now all I'm going to do is slacken off this jaw on this side. And push this one across. Hundred and ninety-six. 
That's a six. Ten. There's a hundred. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. Hundred. Ninety-six. I should just be able to tighten this drawer up at the back. Just nip up the other jaws. Two centre drill holes. It's nearly five mil, roughly, should be five. So now I want to drill this and bore it out 20 mil and take the cut clock out of the way. do is use a 7mm drill to put me the, the bore, touch that, I'm zeroing my tail stuck off there, yeah. I'll go in 40mm. Change the drill for a 12 mil drill. Eighteen millimeter drill. set my boring bar up and a dial indicator on the saddle so when the boring bar goes to the end of the bore the indicator on the saddle will go one revolution to zero and I know that then the tool is at the depth I need I just want to face this trail, get rid of this lump on the end. Right. 
1940. triangle foil which uses a scraper to take the sharp edges off that's okay I'll just put the part central in the four jaw chuck and I'll just Put some emery over here to take off any chop marks. Just check that it's running true. Each division is one tenth of a thou. So that's about three tenths. Now what I want to do on this is put an angle on the edge so I can fix a handle to it. I've got this piece of steel bar and what I want to do is put an angle of about 20 degrees on there to give me a flat surface and then I can put a thread on this. I've put the compound slide round to 20 degrees and I just want to put the chamfer on that corner. <coughs> So what I need to do now, this part will be made like that, so I need to put a hole at 20 degree from the body into this and tap it 8mm. Now I've set up my tool post drill and in that I've put a 8mm end mill, so I'm hoping to machine a flat on that face so we can get a good start on a hole. I've set the angle to the same 20 degrees and I've set the end mill on centre. Let's put a flat on the face there. I've just put a centre drill just to center the flat. I've changed it for a six and a half mil drill. I'm 
just tapping through straight through into the center then I'll just have to clear the counter bore that I've done and take the sharp edges off the inside let's change for the bottom inter it's better to have a good thread and a deep one than a shallow one that gets broken off with the force being put on it here's the finished part you see it's just cut into the side there I didn't want it to go into the main bore because that would lock it up but just on this chamfer the cap still fits on there that's finished so now we've changed the chuck for the three jaw and start to make the handle I'm just turning the OD down to 8 millimeter it's a 10 mil bar So now I'll just put a chamfer on the beginning, a lead. There's my 8mm die in the die holder. It goes onto the, the guide bar. I could use the handle on the end of the headstock, or I could just use the chuck key in the chuck. Now it's started to cut, I'll put some oil on it. So I get to the face. I've just machined a, an angle on this just so it blends in better with the body so now let's turn it round all I need to do on this end is form take the sharp edges off just form a dome on the end The hole will be useful for tightening it up. So this is the sliding part. This can lock up with these two cap heads onto the the T slot. Put a bit of oil on there. The jaw on first. And the handle and the cam works like that this cap all it does is two teeth go into the slot the end of the bar and it just stops the 
Campart coming off. We should still turn. So now if I set this up to this block of wood, slide the cam across. lock this up and when you turn the cam it's loose there if you turn the cam it locks it in position and you could use that principle on a small vice well that's it for today and we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering.